Hi, this is Phil Menez, Vice President of Go-To-Market Execution for Vast Data. And today I'm going to give you an introduction to the day's architecture. And since I got my start in tech sales running around New York City as an SE with a bag full of whiteboard markers, we're going to do this whiteboard style, which I always love for architecture conversations. So to set the table, we're going to start by a quick introduction into the two main architectures that you're going to see in the unstructured data space. So the first is the dual controller, right? Really pioneered by NetApp over 30 years ago. I've got a couple controllers with some CPU and memory and then a shared pool of disk, right? They both see the same disk. And, you know, main benefit, right? This is a really simple architecture to build and manage. Uh, challenge is I can only put so much capacity behind a couple controllers. Now I can upgrade my controllers to be more powerful, but ultimately, you know, if I don't have any more options to upgrade, my only choice is to create an island. So it's not uncommon for customers with a decent amount of data, if they're using a dual control architecture to have a lot of systems, right? I've seen, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 dual controller systems, you know, all set up next to each other, everyone an island. So that's why we saw, you know, the introduction of the shared nothing or scale out architecture, right? So here I've got a CPU, some memory and a pool of disk, right? And that pool of disk is owned by that single controller. So ultimately that becomes the bottleneck. I can only process so much data through that controller for the data that I've got. Then I have fixed scaling. So I, I might be able to use pools of different sizes, but generally speaking, I need to scale in fixed increments, right? I have the same blend of CPU, memory, networking, and disks here, right? So I don't have a lot of flexibility in how I scale, but ultimately while I'm scaling my resources linearly as the system grows, I'm not really scaling performance because as I add more nodes, I have more what we call east-west traffic inter-node communication, right? As I grow, I'm really stealing a lot of the resources for the internal traffic as opposed to application traffic. Think about it. I have a request come into one node, the data is on another node. I got to go get that data, bring it back, then I can deliver it up. There's a lot of different communication required between the nodes to make this architecture work. So I'm not really scaling performance linearly. There's a lot of performance capability I lose as the system scales. A lot of times you kind of get to a point and these architectures can tip over. We also have limited data services because every bit of data is owned by a single controller. Like I don't really get a good global view. So doing things like global data reduction on this is really challenging. There's a lot of systems you're gonna see kind of compression only, maybe no data services at all. And node failures are a big challenge here, right? Because if I lose one of those controllers, I lose all the disks behind it. And when this architecture was built, drives were kind of the most likely thing to fail, but now we have SSDs, they're becoming really big. Uh, the controller is more likely to crash than anything else. And that means I'm gonna have to rebuild and do more east-west traffic between all of these different nodes when things fail. So when you see larger clusters, it's kind of not common to see them in a, not uncommon, to see them in like a constantly degraded state, right? So we had to look for a different approach, right? So Vast introduced the disaggregated shared everything architecture. We kind of took this concept of a node and broke it apart. So instead of a node, right, uh, a fixed node, I have these independent scaling layers, right? I have a, a layer of CPU, kind of look at this as the performance layer, and then I have the capacity layer down here. Notice also DRAM's gone away and has been replaced with storage class memory. So we don't have to deal with the challenges of volatile memory. Now we have a fast, memory space that's also persistent. It means there's a lot of things that we don't have to worry about in this the disaggregated shared everything architecture. And really important, we've tied all of this together with NVMware Fabric. So main benefits here, right? I can scale performance and capacity independently, right? I can add more CPU or more capacity depending on the mix that I need at the time. I no longer have to fail the scale only in fixed increments. Uh, because we've used NVMe Fabric, really interesting, every CPU sees every device as actually a local device um, in the entire system. That means I don't have to talk to my neighbors to process data. I can go directly to the metadata I need. I can go directly to the data I need without talking to my peers. So again, not just having NVMe Fabric makes it disaggregated, shared everything. It's the architecture setup that allows each one of these devices to use everything as if it was its own device in the system. Uh, when I now have the shared everything view, my front end becomes stateless. So I can drop one of these CPU nodes and I don't lose access to anything on the back end because every other CPU sees everything already, right? My front end now is totally stateless. I also don't have to rebuild anything when I have a CPU fail, right? Because again, it's all available. So if I have a container crash, which is the way that we manage the front end here, 
I don't lose access to anything on the back end. I don't have to rebuild any healthy SSDs because of a CPU crash or failure. We also, again, not just having uh, access to the drives, but having now a shared global memory pool that's persistent allows some really interesting things. So the first is we use this as a write buffer. That means when I'm landing data on the vast data platform and all lands in storage class memory, and that allows us to use really low cost, low endurance SSDs on the back end because we're landing everything in this buffer, which has great performance, great endurance. And then we destage in a very specific and careful way, allowing us to maximize the lifespan of these low cost SSDs. We can also do all sorts of interesting things around global data services. The first is similarity data reduction. So similarity is a new type of data reduction, right? Above and beyond dedupe and compression. You get the global nature of deduplication, but the fine granularity of compression. Dedupe and compression work pretty well for things like structured data workloads, right? Deduplication, great for VDI, virtual machines, compression, okay, pretty good for databases, or when I have multiple copies, I get deduplication, but unstructured data doesn't get great results from those alone, and similarity is really tailor-made to drive maximum efficiency out of unstructured data workloads. Great example, we use uh, similarity to reduce backups that are already deduped and compressed, right? So if I can take data that's been deduped and compressed, and reduce it even further, that's kind of a good index for what I, do I get above and beyond dedupe and compression with similarity. And because again, everything is disaggregated, shared everything, I can now look at ways to protect data differently. I don't have to worry about the individual node failure. I can now deliver much wider stripes. So truly global erasure codes. When we look at um, our global erasure code, something we call locally decodable, we get at scale under 3% overhead and 60 million years mean time between failures. So I get maximum resilience and maximum efficiency. Everything that we try to do at VAS Data is about eliminating trade-offs. So no compromise around performance and efficiency, no compromise around simplicity and scale, right? No compromise around resilience, security, or feature functionality. So truly a unique architecture. Uh, it's often been imitated that people are saying, I've got NVMe or Fabric, so now we're disaggregating we're shared everything, but unless you truly built your architecture around these two tech, these new technologies, which haven't existed very long, then you're really not maximizing their full potential. So this is just the architecture under the covers. Definitely love to talk to you more about the full vast data platform and how we can help modernize your data center and modernize your data at the same time with the vast data platform. Phil Menez here, VP of go-to-market execution. Looking forward to talking to you all in the field. Uh, Enjoy the journey of tapping into the full potential of your data with AI.